Come on, speak it this night. I will remain confident, confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. And I will wait on you. If you don't mind waiting, I dare you declare it out of your own mouth. I will wait on you. in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord because I serve an everlasting God. I serve a God that is always there. I serve a God that will never leave me, never forsake me. Amen. I serve a God that will go against my enemies for me. I serve a God, amen, that will provide for me, that loves me unconditionally. I, I serve uh, the Almighty, great I am. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I would like to introduce myself. I am Vicky. Amen, Sister Vicky. I want to welcome you all for um, coming across this audio over YouTube. Those of you that will join me online tonight, thank you and God bless you. We're going to go ahead and move into um, go into the covering scripture tonight. I'm going to be reading songs. Uh, chapter 1, I'm going to be reading verse 1 through 6. Amen. I'm going to be reading out the NIV version. Blessed is the one who does not walk and step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but, which, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates of his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. Mm. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff like that the wind blows away. Hmm. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Thank you, Father God, for the reading of your word on tonight. God, we asking for you to cover us in this moment, God. Cover us, oh, Father God, to keep us, cleanse us, restore us, build us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any weapon that has formed against us at this moment, God, you said in your word it will not prosper. Father God, may your will take effect right now in our lives, God. May your will take effect right now in our minds, body, and and so, Father God, have your way like never before. May your people hear something that will help bring about a change in their lives, God. May your people that are called by your name, God, seek your face. Humble themselves and seek your face and pray in this hour, Lord God. May your people have a willing heart, God. A willing heart to receive what you are trying to put in the atmosphere, oh Father God. What you are delivering to them on tonight father god have your way in their lives like never before oh god take out stony hearts and give your people a heart of flesh god a softer heart to care to love and to give in the mighty name of jesus and god let your word go forth lord god don't just use me, Lord God, but use your servants that you bring online tonight, God, that may have some words of encouragement, oh God, to help put in the atmosphere, oh God. Dead in my flesh and allow the spirit. 
spirit to speak to your people. These are not my people. These are your people, God. And I thank you for using me right now in this moment, God. Thank you for choosing me, oh, Father God, to be a vessel for you, oh, God. And I thank you for it right now. How about no weapon that has formed against Watch Out Podcast shall prosper prosper in the mighty name of jesus and i count it all down right now in jesus mighty name amen amen thank you lord god now we're gonna go ahead amen we're gonna go ahead and get into this word on encouraging word on tonight because i believe that god has given me by faith some words of encouragement that's gonna help somebody if it only helped just one person then um i believe i i did the job pretty well if it just helped one person because god has called me to encourage people that's what i love to do that's what god has called me to do he has given me the strength to do that amen and i thank god for giving me the strength to encourage people even when i'm going through even when even when chaos is happening in my life god still give me the strength to encourage you amen you listener amen i don't believe that you came across this video by mistake i believe that god allow you to come across this audio because it's something that you need to hear it's something that he's trying to embed in your spirit so that you can be all that he has called you to be amen i thank you for it right now father god i thank you amen amen with that being said like i said we're gonna go ahead excuse my voice on tonight y'all <laughs> excuse my voice my allergies sometimes act up so um my voice is a little hoarse right now but god has given me the strength to carry on so i thank god for that amen so okay so before i um go into the uh topic scripture on tonight y'all already know this for me with this line i gotta play my babies amen i gotta play my babies they're gonna have to tell you why we must how much jesus love you hey man they're gonna tell you how much jesus love you <sighs> hallelujah thank you jesus give me a moment to get to the clip i know y'all got some i know y'all out there got some patience because god people gotta have some patience <laughs> amen amen let me get to it y'all there we go i think i'm on track now Amen, amen, amen. Hey. Yes, Jesus love me. Yes, Jesus love me. Yes, Jesus love me. Cause the Bible tells me so. Because the Bible tells me so. Amen, amen. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus loves me. Amen. Jesus loves me. How do I know that he loves me? He loves me because the Bible. Ha <laughs> ha. The Bible tells me so. Amen. That's something. You ain't got to worry. I don't have to go by what folks say. I don't have to go by what nobody say. I know that Jesus loved me because the written word of God has told me how much Jesus loved me. Amen. So I ain't got to go by what nobody say. I, I know for myself that he loves me. Because I read the word of God and the word of God reminds me. Amen. The love just bounce off the pages. Amen. That's how I know Jesus loved me. <laughs> when I read his word, I feel joy. Joy on the inside. I can't explain it. Woo! That's how much I know Jesus loved me. Amen. Thank you, God. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get into the topic scripture on tonight. And I'm going to be coming out of Psalms psalms um chapter 9 and i'm going to be reading verse 9 and 10 and i am going to be reading out the niv version on tonight so again psalms 9 and i'm going to be reading verse 9 and 10 and then right after the scripture i'm just going to go ahead and get into the encouraging words on tonight okay um the lord is a refuge for the oppressed a stronghold 
in times of struggle. Uh, mm, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never, mm, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. I want to read that again. Amen. I want to read that one more time, starting at verse 9. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get in these encouraging words on tonight. Because I believe by faith that God has given me some words of encouragement that is going to help you, listener, that will come across this audio on YouTube. And those of you that may join me live on, on the line tonight, I believe by faith that God has brought you in the presence of this video or this audio to deliver a message that's going to be sure to change your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. When life <clears throat> throws curveballs, <laughs> the first initial reaction is to duck and hide to prevent getting hit. Because as we know, curveballs are unexpected and out of the alignment of direction. Curveballs are surprising and disruptive. In this life, we as children of God go through plenty of unfair, unwanted, and unjust situations. At times, it's out of our control. And that leads us to only control how we respond and cope with what's happening now. There was a saying I've heard so long ago that say, you may control what's ha you may can't control what's happening but you have control over how you allow it to affect you mm. i'm gonna say that again there was a saying that i have heard so long ago that go a little something like this huh. you may can't control what's happening but you have control over how it affects you Will I allow it to hurt me to the degree that I fall into a depression? Or should I allow it to strengthen me despite of how it makes me feel? <laughs> See, curveballs can always be understandable. <laughs> Sometimes you may not understand why. <laughs> why is this thing happening? Why did this situation take place? I prayed, I fasted, I did all that the Lord has required of me concerning this unexpected thing. But yet, the outcome is not what I've imagined. It's not what I hope for. Bad things happen to good people is the motto in today's society. You could be thinking what I'm about to say. Hmm. You could be thinking this exact thing what I'm about to say. Why, Lord? Why did this thing happening or has happened when, when faithfully I've been serving you? That's when the Holy Spirit led me to Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. Hmm. The, the, scripture, the scripture read as follows. Not only so, but we also glory on our suffering. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, and hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been giving to us. Therefore, this scripture had me thinking that when unsettling situations occur, it is the present only. Oh, mm -mm -mm. hold on for a minute, y'all. Therefore, this scripture had me thinking that when unsettling situations occur, it is presented to build character. See, when troubles or disappointments arrive, this is not the time to act out in disgrace. But 
time to stand firm and take God at his word. Your character represents who you truly are in God. I said your character represents who you truly are in God. Problems doesn't arise to destroy you, but to rebuild you. Mm, 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 mm. So that you can be who God created you to be. Perseverance happens only when prosecution arises. Will you stand tall despite if what and who tries to bring you down? Will you believe despite what you are seeing? Will you love despite the hate and false accusations that have been thrown in your path? What is your character when curveballs are being thrown your way? What is your character when curveballs are being thrown your way? See, let's face reality on the night, y'all. Let's just, let's, let's just face reality on tonight. The reality is bad things does happen to the just and the unjust, to the evil people and the good people. Nobody is free from troubles. There is no escape nor preventable measures we all have went through we all are currently going through or about to go through <laughs> because you gotta realize this thing jesus went through so of course we're gonna have to go through but when it's your time how are you going to move in the midst of the situation when the rain comes how will you take cover will you run and hide or will you use the umbrella that God bless you with? Standing firm knowing that God controls the rain. Your umbrella is the breastplate of righteousness for those of you that don't understand metaphor. The shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit and the gospel of peace is your umbrella. And the rain is anything that is uncomfortable for you. The rain is everything that is trying to drown your peace. So let me end this encouragement by saying hold on to hope and allow God to give you perseverance while building your character. Because curveballs will come. Amen, amen, amen. God has actually given me that on uh, Wednesday night. I thank God because I was sitting there, I was meditating. And I said, God, what it is that you want me to tell your people on Thursday night? What it is that, that, that is so important that your people need to know? And God began to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to me and to inform me that life <laughs> would throw you a curveball and those of you that never heard the word curveball <laughs> please google that and look that up <laughs> but curveballs when it comes in your life it comes to get you off path it comes to knock you off your feet it comes to to pretty much blind you and to stop you and to freeze you i mean curveballs will have you uh, um, depressed and living in anxiety have you hurt because basically when i say curveball i mean um you know uh circumstances that that is out of your control situations that has come in your life to bring you down you know trials and tribulations they are curveballs but whatever is your curveball whatever your situation is you got to understand that it's only it only come to build character in you. God want to know if you're going to stand in the midst of what you're going through. And some people go through worse things than others. <laughs> some people go through worse things than others. Hey, man, you know, and, and sometimes you may look at other people and say, wow, they got it so easy. But then you look at your situation, you like, dang, I got to go through this. I'm going through that. It's like one thing after another. And I'm telling you, when that happens, count it all joy. <laughs> count it all joy. I know it's hard for you to hear this because the situation you may be going through is hurtful. It's, it brings pain. It brings sorrow. Hey, man, it, it, it hurts bad. 
But God allowed troubles to come to help build our character. Amen. It's what we do in the in the troubles that 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 God God tests us in troubles. Amen. He tests us. You know when you're going through something on your job. Amen. And people, somebody there might be trying to, you know, get you fired and all this and that. And you depend upon this job because you need to pay your bills. But God is looking at, are you going to try to get those people back? Are you going to, you know, are you going to try to do an eye for an eye? Or are you going to just take the high road and say, you know what? I'm just going to stay in faith. I'm going to believe God. No weapon form against me shall prosper. Yeah, that person trying to get me fired off my job. Yes, that person trying to uh, 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 trying to uh, uh, interfere in my life in a negative way. But I'm going to believe God that this situation is going to blow over. Amen. So when you believe God in the midst of your troubles, God will begin to build a character that is pleasing to him. Amen. Because God do look at people's character. So don't think for a second that you can act any kind of way, you can be any kind of way, you can say anything, because all of that builds character. When you begin to talk outside of the word of God, think outside of the word of God, do things outside the word of God, then your character begin to be tainted. Because you got to understand, some people are watching your life, and they seeing how you endure. And when you are going through storms when you are in the rain when when you are in the rain amen god has given you an umbrella and that's the breastplate of righteousness he's expecting you to stand on his word he's expecting you to do not do what his word says amen amen when when people use you god said pray for them love your enemies be good to those that uh despitefully uses you we got to stand on the word of god we have to do what the word of god say sometimes you might get out a little get get out of the alignment of what god wants because we all humans we all get in the flesh at times but you got to repent and turn from your wicked ways god said humble yourself and turn turn from those things that's not of him turn from that way of thinking turn from that because i'm telling you there, there has been attacks come my way witches that i know that are witches amen i'm going there I know there are witches that have come against me, but pretending to love me, pretending to be of me, but uh, pretending to be of God. I'm sorry. But in reality, God was letting me know it through discernment that these witches are trying to bring me under. They are trying to throw things at me, curveballs at me, trying to get me to stop and try to get and try to block me from being who God has called me to be. It's not those people. It's the spirit in those people amen but i have to take the high road i have to pray i have to fast i have to that's, see that's how you that's how you overcome the enemy's attacks when you learn to pray and when you learn to fast you i mean those 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 little soft prayers save that for breakfast um when you wake up in the morning time but when you when midnight hour come come on somebody when you got real problems when you got people that's really come against you when you got situations that's really trying to kill steal and destroy you it's time to pray warfare prayer in the middle of the night come on somebody it's time to pray when people are sleeping it's time to let go it's time to uh uh uh, uh turn that plate down it's time to put away that spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> That lasagna, that cornbread, and them collard greens. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta put that plate away, and you gotta use that time to to strengthen your spirit. Because anytime you is a child of God, you gonna have people attack your life. You gonna have people come against you because it's not the people, but it's the spirits in those people that will use people to to throw curveballs your way come on somebody and if you're not praying and if you're not fasting those spirits that are being sent your way that negativity that being sent your way those principalities that are being sent your way will conquer you amen it will overpower you you know why because you're not putting on the breastplate of righteousness you're not doing what god is requiring of you see some pe people are always quoting scriptures no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But that's not necessarily true for everybody. 
Huh. When God when the when the script when that scripture was quoted in the Bible, that that is uh for people that is of God. When you are really of God, no weapon formed against you will prosper. You know what? Because you have the protection of God. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. That's leading and guiding you and teaching you how to do warfare. But when you are not of God, you are automatically operating under the uh, 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 the spirits of this world, the spirit of Satan. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got to have some kind of spirit. And I'm telling you tonight, amen, through the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's time. It's time out to stop saying little kitty prayers. It's time to graduate. Those of you that have an attack against your life, one by one, it's like it's always something, always something. This is the time to not be, the, 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 uh, this is not the time to, to just sit around and do nothing. It's the time to really press in and pray. Press in and pray. Press in and fast. Because God said some of spirit is not going to go away unless you fast and pray. You can't just say little kitty prayers <laughs> when you still drinking milk. You can't say little kitty prayers and expecting a, a, a big outcome. You got to really press in. That's one reason why God allowed me to start a podcast uh, um, around about this night. Around about the uh, midnight hour. Because the midnight hour is so important. It is a time that people should be praying like never before. It's a time that you really got to press in. Because principalities are attacking the minds of God's people like never before. They, they, are, protect, they are attacking the bodies of God's people like never before. Amen. And I'm telling you. Weapons of warfare is, is, is reading the word of God and not just reading the word of God, but you have to live the word. You have to make sure that you are repenting because every man should be repenting every day because we all sin prob- daily. We all sin daily. Huh. So therefore, nobody is above that. We all have to repent and ask God for forgiveness for the things and, and the whole, if you is filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring into your remembrance everything that you have done that day that wasn't of God. Immediately repent. Because I'm telling you, don't let repentance be the reason why Satan conquers you. Don't let the, the lack of repentance huh, send you to hell. Amen. God wants. To deliver his people. He wanted to set the captives free. That's the whole reason why Jesus died on the cross. So that you could be set free. You can be delivered from every issue. You might go through problems. But it won't help you. <laughs> people. I mean. We we as humans. Will never be free. From problems. I don't care how saved you are. You're going to have something in your life. Trouble going to come. If you're not saved and you do evil to everybody else, trouble's still going to come to you. Amen. Everybody is going to have trouble that comes that way. You know why? Because Jesus has trouble. Jesus had trouble that came his way. But Jesus didn't let the troubles have him. And that's why God wants us to build character. That's why God wants us to press in and to pray. And he wants us to press in and believe him and his word. Because even though we go through these trials and these tribulations and these troubles, even though we go through these things, these situations that we didn't ask for, sometimes we go through stuff that we didn't even ask for. Sometimes stuff happens is unexpected. And sometimes, amen, we can pray about a situation and it don't turn out the way we want. It's not because God didn't hear our prayers, but it wasn't his will, amen. But in the midst of us going through, amen, regardless if we get what we want or not, we have, it builds character in us. And we have to believe God and his word. We have to believe that the reason why it didn't go through for us is because God is protecting us. He's shielding us or he got something better for us. Amen. So regardless of what it is, God wants to build character in us. He want to make sure that even though we go through problems, he want to make sure that we don't have, we don't, we have the type of stamina and endurance 
to overcome this. We're not allow, we're not allowing it to make us have anxiety or depression. You know, he wants us to know that even though we go through, amen, that we are conquerors, amen. That problem won't have me. That problem not going to have me down and out. That problem not going to have me depressed going through. That problem ain't going to have me all messed up in the mind. I'm not going to let that problem have me, amen. I have the problem, but I'm not going to let the problem have me. And that's the way of, that's the thinking that God wants us to have. Amen. And I thank God. I thank him so much because, you know, at times we sit around, we wonder, like, why me? Why I have to go through this? Why this have to be my story? But we don't never take the time out to think about, you know, why, why I'm going through this, you know, Am I going to give God what is due unto him? His, you know, God wants our attention when we're going through troubles. He don't want us to look at the trouble and, and, and be so dwelling all on the trouble, thinking about the trouble, trying to find a solution for that situation. God wants us to look at him because he's the problem solver. He wants us to look, where, look up where comes our help. Our help comes from God. He wants us to, this is not, the, when you have problems, this is not the time to turn away from God. This is the time to go to him like never before. Because God is the one that can give you a way out of your troubles. God is the one that can make sure you overcome that situation. God is the one that can give you peace in the midst of your troubles. Come on, somebody. This is what God can do. But you got to let him do it. You got to give him permission to do it. See, God is not like the devil. Huh. Satan comes in your life and he just bombard your life. He just come in and ask no questions. He don't care if you want him there or not. But God is gentle. He's not going to just come in and dwell. You have to give him permission to come in and dwell. You have to, when God set the atmosphere, God said when he knocks at your heart, let him in. He ain't going to just come into your heart, just go into your heart and, and, and you don't really want him. You got to want him. Amen. Amen. Just like your problems. God can just solve your problems, but sometimes he waiting on you to give him the okay to solve your problems. He waiting on you to give the problem to him so he can go ahead and move. But some people don't want to give God a problem. They want to fix the problem on their own when it's too hard for them. And they keep going over the same situation over and over and over again because you're trying to find a solution to the problem. Really, the solution to your problems is Jesus. Amen. You got to give your problems to Jesus. Because if you don't, the devil going to, I'm telling you, the devil going to overwhelm you. He going to make you so tired out. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be, even if you let, if you, if you, uh, uh, lost a loved one, you grieve. You, some people have been grieving for years and they lost their loved one 20 years ago and they still grieving. Amen. And I'm telling you because they have not given it to Jesus. Hey, man, you, we got to understand we all are here for a short period of time. We all got a number. We all going to have to go and be judged by God one day. Hey, Amen. You know, weeping may do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When you are weeping for so long, it's because you have not given that situation to Jesus. Hey, Amen. God don't want us weeping for days and days at a time. That's not... What God wants for our lives. Amen. He wants us to live in joy. He wants us to live in peace. Amen. He wants us to be able to stand when the evil times come. Stand. Stand on his words. Stand like never before. But it's coming a time now where a lot of Christians are falling away. A lot of People that was on this path of righteousness, they are gone. They are going back into the world, and we live in the last days where a lot of people are turning from the faith and they going back into the world and they actually staying, and that's dangerous. <laughs> I know some. I know y'all probably know somebody. If you don't know a lot of people, you know at least one person that that really was on fire for God. But for some odd reason, they back into the world again. They don't went back to their old way of thinking, went back to their old way of doing things. And they haven't came back. You know, and it's been years, and they still out there doing the same thing. But you know what? The Bible speaks of this. 
And I, and God do not want you to be one of those people that go back into the world and stay there. Amen. It's dangerous when you go back into the world and you actually stay there. You get comfortable. Amen. You get comfortable and you don't hear the Holy Spirit no more. You don't hear the voice of God no more because you don't went back into the world. You stayed and you got so much, you got so much, uh, uh, um, filled up with satan and his lies and what he has to tell you and it just voided out the 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 word that god had implanted into your heart that that no longer exists because you done picked up the things of the devil and god doesn't want that for our lives he wants us to be conquerors he wants us to be victorious he wants us to be able to stand and the only way you're going to be able to stand is through prayer through fasting through meditating on God's word. Amen. It's the only way that you're going to be able to stand. Because if you if you don't have your own prayer life, it's one thing when folks are praying for you. Amen. Thank God for people praying for you. But there's going to come a time where God going to allow you to be in a situation where you're not going to be able to call that prayer warrior. That prayer warrior that you normally hook up with ain't going to be available for you. So you got to learn how to go to God for yourself. Because I'm telling you, when Jesus Christ come, you ain't going to be able to pull your prayer warrior with you. You're going to be judged for what you have done. God going to look at you and say, where have you prayed? Amen. What have you done? God going to be looking at you because every man is for themselves. Amen. Because every man is going to go in front of job, uh, in front of God single. Huh. Amen. I don't care if you married or what. You going in front of God single. So God going to look at you. Based on, he's going to judge you based off of what you did, what you did in your life. Amen. I thank God. Woo, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We got, we as people of God, got to take God seriously, man. We, we really do because I see so many people. I scroll, I don't even scroll down Facebook like that. But when I scroll down Facebook and I look at TikTok, I see so many people that are supposed to be children of God. And they doing these worldly dances and they sitting up here doing all different types of stuff that, I, that, that, that they know God don't approve of. How in the world can you feel comfortable doing the opposite of what God's word says? Like you in a dangerous place. That's why God said it's only a very few is going to make it in. The way, the, the road to hell is very wide. And it's going to be so many people out of billions and billions of people that's on this earth. Majority of these people are going to go to hell. Majority of them. It's only going to be a, a, a very small amount that's going to make it to heaven because not too many people want to stay on this path. You know, people want the benefits of God, but they don't want to do what is required to, to keep him in your life. They don't want to do what is required to go to the next level to help him, sorry, to help him dwell in your life. Amen. And I'm telling you, God is holding the people that say they of him. I'm telling you, God is holding them responsible and reliable for the 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 character huh, that they that they are portraying here on this earth matter if it's real or fake god is going to judge you there are people out there that are pretending to be of god but really they're not they are hypocrites and god know the truth god know the truth god know if you're real or not god know where your heart is heart is at you can, you can fool people all day, but what's the use of fooling people when you can't fool God? People don't have a heaven and hell to put you in. People may praise you on this earth, but at the end of the day, when, when it's all said and done, there's only one judge. It's only one judge. And that's, and that's God. That's God that has given Jesus authority. And I'm telling you, if you don't stop playing with God, you're going to perish. And that goes for me too. I can't allow myself to get to that point where I'm playing games with God. Because I'm too scared of him. I fear God. I have a fear to know that if I don't do the, do what God say. And I don't do his word. And I don't repent. I believe God at his word. I believe that I will perish and go to hell. 
that's the reason why despite of what I go through in my personal life, I still, I still have a hunger for God. And that's what you need to do. That's, that's the type of, that's the type of feelings you need to have towards God. You need to have a hunger that regardless if things going right in my household or not, regardless if people up against me or not, regardless if people want to listen to what I got to say or not, I'm going to stay on this path of righteousness because I love God and God loves me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! How about shit it about sit here? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I didn't know which way out the Holy Spirit was going to go tonight. But I thank God for where he went to tonight because I'm telling you, this is, it's an urgency out here. It's an urgency to do God's will and to fulfill the purpose that he has for you. It's an urgency to, to, to get this thing done because time is winding down. Time is winding down. There are people dying daily. It ain't just one person dying daily. It's thousands of people are dying daily. And you want to make sure the purpose that God has for you and the will that he has for you has been completed when your when breath leaves your body. You want to make sure that you in the right you in the alignment of God's word, you in the alignment of his will. You need to make sure cuz nobody can't do this thing for you. Nobody can't walk this walk for you. Those of you that are married, you can't do this for your husband. You can't do this for your wife. You got to do this for yourself. Amen. This race is for you. The path that God has for, um, the path that God has you on is your path. Amen. Even if your friends don't want to go, you got to, you got to make that decision that I'm going to go all the way with God. There have been people in my life that have started out with me and they no longer with me anymore because they don't win not everybody but it has been some people that have fell away they have fallen fallen away they have went back into the world and they stayed there they haven't came back out yet amen you can pray for people see this is how god works you this is how he works right here you can he will have you praying for people and um, and, and sometimes you will think because you're praying for somebody you will think okay my prayers must not be and be heard because I don't see a change in their lives. But you just wait. God said we must, we as children of God have to be patient. But we live in a world now where people pray and they want it, they want, they want it now. They want their miracle now. They want to see the manifestation now. But in reality, sometimes you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to be patient because God is dealing with a soul. He's dealing with another person's heart. And if their heart is hard, it's going to take some time. Some people's heart is so hard and so stony. It takes time for God to soften their heart. It takes situations. And when I say it takes time for God to soften a person's heart, because that person may not be willing to, to yield to the voice of God yet. But God will still deal with that person because it's not God's will. Any man shall perish. But. God will still deal with that person because you are praying. You know how many people God will turn to a a reprobated mind? That means a mind where God will will just take his hands off of you and let you do what you want to do. But by you being righteous and you praying for that person, mm, God will begin to keep keep moving in that person's life because you're praying. That's why we cannot stop praying for those around us that got a stony heart. Amen. We got to keep praying so God, so eventually that person will break and that person will allow God to come into them. And then once, once God break through that stony heart and, and, and give that man a heart of flesh, then God can begin to make the necessary changes in his life, in, in her life. You can't expect God to change people with a stony heart. It's not going to happen. God deal with our heart first. And once he can get in there, your mind begin to be renewed. Amen. Because he changed all of that. He'll change your character. Once God get in your heart, you don't do the same things no more. You don't act the same way no more. You think before you talk. I mean, God will change all that. Whatever was wrong with you before, God will reverse that thing when he get in your heart. But some people will not let God in. That's why God said when he knocks at the door, let him in. But some people, it's going to take a long time for God to let in. 
Amen. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know some of you ain't going to want to hear this part. But some people, God been knocking at their heart for so long. And they done perished. And they, and they perished with a stony heart. Mm, 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 mm. They don't perish with a stony heart. That means God has been knocking at their heart, trying to come in, trying to get them to see that he's real. But they were so stubborn. They wanted their way. They want to have it their way. And, and some of them people didn't have nobody praying for them. Nobody. <laughs> Had family members went to church faithfully and didn't even pray for them. They didn't even pray for her. When you see people going through, pray for them. Stop talking about them. Just pray for them. Pray for them even if you don't see anything happening right now because it's not about when you want it. God is still dealing with their hearts. God deal with the people's hearts. And when the heart is no longer stony, God can go in and, and that, that same person that had a, a, a stony heart, that same person that was, that, that, that was on drugs being, huh, God, once God get in their heart, they'll be the best, they'll be the best preacher out here. They'll be the best teacher out here. Come on. They, they, they would do their best in God. But we got to pray for folks. We got to pray for folks with stony heart. I'm telling you, I've been connected with people that had stony hearts. And I and I, I heard it myself trying to hurt trying to help them. Because I try to help them. I try to help. Them. I try to change them. I try to change the way they did things. And the only thing I did was hurt myself. Because I realized, I came to the realization that I can, I'm not the one that can change them. I can't change nobody with no stony heart. I got to give it to God because God only has the ability to change people. I can't do that. I may not like what a certain, a certain person or people do, but at the same time, what can I do about it other than pray? That's all I can do, and that's all you can do. You can't do no more than that. Pray. Pray. Pray without season. You might be tired of praying for them, but pray anyway. You may be tired of seeing them do the same thing over and over. And you might look at them and be like, it ain't no change. And then you just stop praying. And that might be the, that, that might be the moment that God, that, that, that their heart, is, 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 they begin to let God in. And their heart begins to be soft. Softened. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God answers your prayers. If you live in right and you love God, he answers your prayers. He may not answer it the way that you desire him to answer it. You may not get the results that you was hoping for. But God will answer your prayers. And he's going to do things his way. You can't pray and expect God to do it your way because that's witchcraft. You can't say, God, do this. Do that. Do it this way. Do it that way. Because no man can control God. God has all the control. And at the end of the day, God's going to do things his way. And that's what's going on in this world today. We as people want to control other folks. We can't control our children. We can't control our children. We can't control our spouse. We can't control people on our jobs. We can't control our parents. We can't control church members. We can't have that type of control over people. If you're calling the shots in other people's life, that's witchcraft and that's control. That's not of God. You got to pray for folks. You got to pray for people. Give God that. Let God have that control. Let him, because he he's the only one that knows the outcome. That's why you got so many people turning to this dark world that folks, and you won't hear this in church. You're not going to hear this type of stuff that I'm talking about in church because it, it goes on in church. You got deacons, women, and, and mothers of the church that control how the church runs. So they ain't going to talk about this, stuff like this. You got Jezebelic spirits in the churches, Ahab spirits in the churches. And you wonder why the churches ain't growing, why people ain't getting delivered, set free. Because people don't want to let the Holy Spirit have his way. And sometimes the Holy Spirit don't just bring good news. The Holy Spirit don't bring what you want to hear. The Holy Spirit brings the truth. And sometimes the truth going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you to bring about a change so you can draw closer to Christ. But people want to preach bubble gum. Bubble, that's why I don't, I don't visit a lot of churches now. 
because it, it, you don't feel the spirit. You can tell people will preach off of, uh, off of their, um, off of worldly knowledge. They don't really have the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that draws all men onto Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. But people want that, people want power. People that want power operate under Satan's authority. And I'm telling you, it's dangerous. It is dangerous. It's so much stuff I want to say, but I got to say that for another time. Amen. I got to say that huh, for another audio. Because it's so much stuff that God's going to have me to cover on this podcast. And because I've been through a lot, I've seen a lot at a young age. I've seen a lot of stuff. I experienced a lot of stuff. God allowed me to visit a lot of ministries. A lot of people know me or they know of me because I, I've been in a lot of places. Some places wasn't of God and some places was of God. Amen. But God allowed me to, to experience and see things. So I won't go by what other people say. I've seen it for myself. I've seen things. I've seen supernatural things that if I would tell you about, you probably wouldn't even believe me. I seen God move. I seen what prayer do when you when you when you speak in other tongues and how you really do warfare and how God will turn a situation around. I seen it. I experienced it. So I'm not sitting up here telling nobody nothing about what somebody else said or or, or whatever. I'm telling you what I know. This is what I know. Amen. And God allowed me to go through the things that I have went through in my life so that I can help other people. Amen. God has blessed me to be able to set up here and encourage other folks. Encourage other people. I remember when I was little, I don't think I ever wanted to do was to help people. And I didn't know how God was going to allow me to help people. It's like I always had that, 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 it was like a, a, a intuition or, or a feeling in the within side, within myself. And I always wanted to help people. Or be a teacher. Like I used to always tell my mom, I want to be a teacher when I grow up. But I never know I never known to now that this is what God has called me to do. This is this is what I am I am stepping into my calling. This is what God had called me to do. But even though God has called you to do something, it's warfare behind it. Because the devil not just gonna allow you to do what God wants you to do in peace. He's not just going to allow you to do what God wants you to do and he don't ta- and he take his hands out for you. He's going to keep, even if he don't conquer you, he's going to keep at you with something. Sometimes he's going to use your children. Sometimes he's going to use folks close to you that you thought that were your best friend. Sometimes he's going to use people on your job, your boss. God, I mean, come on. The devil will use whoever he can, whoever, the, if that person allowed the devil to, to be used, <clears throat> If the, if the devil, if that person allowed the devil to use them, they will use, the devil would take that opportunity. Because I'm telling you, there are people that I have trusted with my life, and they portrayed me. Do you know how bad that hurts? Come on. There are people around you with wicked hearts. There are people around you that don't mean you no good. There are people around you that what they are praying. They are literally praying to the devil for your downfall. And you think the devil not answering their prayers? Could the devil answer prayers too? If you say any evil prayers, that's that's the devil job to fulfill that. You think God gonna fulfill evil prayers? No, he don't roll like that. The devil does that. And I'm telling you, we got to get this thing right. If I, uh, somebody got to tell you the truth, because a lot of these churches ain't going to tell no truth. And I'm not down in no church because I tell everybody, please find a pastoral guide or somebody that's looking after your soul. Amen. But be cautious because some of these churches ain't of God. Some of these churches are churches of Baal. <laughs> they are operating on a witchcraft, controlling spirits. They are dictating your walk with God they telling you when or when not to do something only God give that man only God give man that much authority uh, only God has the authority I'm sorry only God has the authority to tell man when and when not to do something amen I'm telling you it was so many people who said this and then I'm gonna do the announcements for the night and then I'm gonna I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and close out 
But what I'm going to say is, what I want to say is, before I started this podcast, there were so many people that I thought that had my best interest at heart. But the main people that I looked up to was the main one telling me that what I'm what I'm thinking about is not going to work. What what I'm talking about can't be done. But I could have felt I could have fed into that negativity and just totally gave up on what God was calling me to do. But I pressed in. I pressed in because I knew the voice of God. I knew. Even when I try to put this thing away, I try to put this podcast away. I said, "Uh, uh-uh, I, I don't. I, I, I'm not going to do. It. I don't feel equipped. It, you know, this negativity coming my way. But God wouldn't allow me to do that. Like God just kept at me, at me. I didn't have no peace. And 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 that's how God lead and guide you too through your peace. <laughs> when you're doing something, you ain't got no peace about it. You better ask God. You better ask God. You somewhere and you ain't got no peace about it. You better start talking to God. You 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 connected with some folks and you ain't got no peace about it. You better start asking God. You got to start asking God about who's in your life because people do. You, you can have the wrong people in your life and they will lead you down a dark path. I'm telling you. That's why God said in his word, we got to be cautious in friendship. You can't just be friending everybody. You can't just have everybody in your atmosphere. You got an anointing to protect. <laughs> That's how Satan do. Satan want to get close to you. Because he knows he can get close to you. Then he can, he can do a lot of things then. He can make some things happen. That's why you got to be cautious. But back to what I was saying. <clears throat> there has been times where people had down me. You know, and it be the main. It was the main people that I looked up to, you know, and 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 this and that. But they didn't want me to go higher in my calling than God. They didn't want me to use my voice when I was, you know, under their leadership. Um, I don't name organizations and stuff. This is what happened in my life when I was under leadership. Certain leaderships, you know, they were trying to dictate dictate a when I should use my gift, and that's not of God. That's control. Anytime a person trying to control you and not allow you to be free in the Holy Spirit, that is not of God. People better wake up and, and smell. You better wake up and smell the fire. Huh. You better wake up and smell that fire. I ain't saying no smoke. You better smell that fire. Because I'm telling you, Satan is deceiving a lot of people. He's deceiving people. That's why you find it now in this day and time it's hard to pray. It's hard to, 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 when you, you know, it's hard to, it's, it's hard. You feel like it's hard to connect, to find that connection with God. You want to go further in your walk with God, but you, you feel like it's a stumbling block. You better look at the people around you, man. I'm telling you, you better look at the people around you because the people around you can dictate, dictate your walk with God. I'm telling you, don't let no man keep you. From doing what God is calling you to do. Don't let no man paralyze you. Because that man don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Yes, respect your leaders that's over you. Talk to them. Let them know what you got in mind. If they don't support you. And you know that what you telling them is of God. And you know this thing to be true. You better get away from that person. Get away from that person. Don't tell them nothing else about the purpose and the plans that God has given you. Don't do it. Get away from that person. Because I'm telling you, people will deceive you. I'm telling you this because it happened to me. I'm telling you this because this is what I experienced. I'm telling you this because this is what's happening in this world. I'm telling you this because I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm telling you because at the end of the day, you got to be real with yourself first. You got to be real with yourself. And you got to be real with God. Because God knows when you're faking and he knows when you're really real. Don't give up praying for the ones that you love. Don't give up on God when things don't go your way. When you want it to go your way. How you want it to go your way. Just trust God that the things is the way it is because that's his will. He allowed it. And he's building character in you. 
He's trying to build your character. Even though you're going through this, are you still going to stay on the battlefield of righteousness? Are you still going to seek my face? Even though you experienced this, are you still... Are you still going to draw closer to me? Are you still going to believe me at my word? Are you still going to fast and pray? Are you still going to do this? God is looking at your character in the midst of going through because there's no way you're not going to go through. You're going to have to go through some stuff because Jesus went through. It's not. It wouldn't be fair for Jesus to go through and we don't go through. Amen. He didn't die so we won't have problems. He died so the problems won't have us. Huh. Oh, I felt that right there. He didn't die. He died. He didn't die just so things can go our way. He died so that we may be victorious. Things not going to always go our way. We're not going to always get the results that we like. But in the process, God is still good. In the process, things is the way it is because that's what God intended it to be. And we got to be okay with the will of God. Not our will be done, but the but God will to be done. Amen. When you get mad about situations in your life and it's not going the way you want it to go, that means you want your will to be fulfilled and not God. Sometimes it's God's will for you to not have a relationship with your father or with your mother. Sometimes it's God's will for people to walk out of your life. Sometimes it's God's will for six, for sickness to come upon you. Sometimes it's God's will. Amen. Sometimes it's God's will. Sometimes we may not understand why God allows certain things to happen. <laughs> We're not going to understand everything. But God's ways is not our ways. The way he do things is not the way we do things. The way he go about things is totally different from the way that we would do it. God may, God will heal that person, but God going to heal that person in his way and in his time. God may deliver that person, but God will do it in his time and in his way. Maybe that person going to have to go through some more stuff, some hard stuff, in order for that person to be delivered. It's things that happen in my life. And I say, Lord, what in the world? Why why I got to go through this? But God was building character in me. God was developing who he wanted me to be. Amen. The more you go through, the stronger you become. The more you go through, the stronger you become. And and Lord knows that's the truth. It's nothing but the truth. Amen. So God said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Because God is building character in his people. He is building something in you that no devil in hell will be able to tear down. He is building a foundation in you where you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will be able to cast out demons. Come on, somebody. You will be able to speak and things will become. That's the, that's the type of power that God is gonna that, that God is placing and building in you. Amen. You're gonna go above and beyond and you're gonna do more. You're gonna be the head and not the tail. God meant that thing. Those that's in him gonna be the head. You're gonna be ahead of this thing. Satan, Satan ain't gonna stand a chance. He ain't gonna know what to throw at you. Because you 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 still walk in faith. See, the main thing Satan trying to do, he's trying to swap your faith from you. He don't want you to have faith. He don't want you to believe God. He wants you to he want you to he feel like if he can get you down and out, because you gotta understand your mind is the battleground. If Satan can get you down and out, then he can ease up in your mind and get you to start thinking contrary to the word of God. He can start putting stuff in your mind that's not true. God don't want that for your life. God want you to overcome that nonsense. That's why God allow you to go through troubles so that he can build uh, 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 in, so he can build tolerance in you. And the devil not going to know what to do. He not going to know where to start. He going to be like, dang, I done did this to him. I done did that to him. This, this guy still standing. He's still praying to God. Like, what's wrong with him? I'm about to do this. But you got to be ready.
ready. You got to be ready. Because if you ain't ready, you're not ready and you're not allowing God. You're not in God while you're going through. You will fall. You will fall. Weapons will form and it will prosper if you're not living if you're not living the word of God. I don't see so many people quote weapons form, but it will not prosper. That right there, in some people's lives, it will prosper. That's things you have to do to keep. You can't just you can't just feel like you get saved and then oh well you don't have to do nothing. Jesus didn't just Walk this earth so that you can just sit around and do nothing. You got stuff to do. You got demons to fight. You got demons that were assigned to your bloodline before you were even born. There are people fighting demons that has been assigned to them that they didn't have nothing to do with, but it has just passed down to you unwillingly. You got to fight these things. You got to keep demons from... Affecting the next generation that's going to come after you. Come on. You got demons to fight. You got to do warfare. And I ain't just telling you this. This is this is what I have to live my own life. I have to do this thing. I don't just get up here and speak this to y'all. I got people that come against me left and right. But it, it I, I built tolerance for that. God had built tolerance in me. I don't fear man. Because I know if I die, I'm going to heaven <laughs> to be with God. Amen. I'm going to do what God called me to do. And no devil in hell going to stop me. I'm declaring this over my own life. You got to declare this over your life. You can't let the devil. That's why Jesus died. So that he wouldn't, the devil would not be able to have power over you. But those of you that don't accept Jesus, I ain't talking to you. Because the devil automatically got you anyway. I'm talking to you people that are saved, delivered, and set free. You got demons to fight. You're going to have to do warfare because there, there are demons that are working in people. Because demons have to want a body. They can't do nothing without a body. They got to have a body. So it's people. You got to think about all these demons that are around you. Everybody ain't saved. Everybody ain't filled with the Holy Spirit. There's demons around you. Daily. And you got to fight. This thing is real. People don't want to. People don't want to do warfare no more. People don't want to come together 12 o'clock midnight no more. I don't beg nobody. Because at the end of the day. It's your week. It, 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 it's. It, it's your choice. Everybody got free will. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody have free will. And one of these days, you're going to have to answer to God. You have to answer to God for what you have done and accomplished on this earth. You're going to have to answer to God. He's going to want to see. He's going to want to know. I mean, he want to see if you're going to operate in his, in, in, in the, in his, and, um, he going to want to know if you're going to operate in him and in his presence and you're going to bring other people closer to him. He want to know, he want to see, I'm sorry. He want to see, he want to see you operating at your best ability because he placed the Holy Spirit in you to be a witness. Stop being caught up on on titles. Amen. Stop being caught up on titles. When you go to heaven, you ain't going to have a title. <laughs> Only person going to have a title is Jesus. Amen. You're going to have to be a count. You, if, if you call yourself a pastor, you better pastor the best of your ability. If you call yourself an evangelist, you better go out there and search for some souls. If you call yourself a teacher, you better not lead God's people astray. <laughs> God ain't playing with nobody. They give themselves titles. You give yourself titles, you better, you better live up to the expectation. You better live up to what you say. Because God ain't expecting no less out of you because that's what you say you are. That's what you believe that you are. That's the oppression that you're giving off. 
If you say you a witness, you better witness the gospel and you better do it right. And you better do it effectively. Because God holding you accountable. God is holding me accountable. Because I call myself a witness. I stand on the book of Acts. Where God said, when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall be my witness. I stand on that word. And I tell people all the time, I'm a witness of the gospel. People have been trying to put titles on me for years, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not caught up in it. I'm a witness. I witness the gospel. I tell people what the Holy Spirit leads me to tell people. I tell people all the time, I'm not a pastor. Some people look at me to pastor them. They want to come to me with their problems all the time. They want to do this and do that. I don't have that ability to 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 uh, um, counsel people all the time. I'm not saying I can't. The Holy Spirit won't lead me to counsel people sometimes, but not all the time. I can't. I can't. You have. It, it comes a time where you have to go to God for yourself. You have to do this thing for yourself. How do you really love God? God said, "If you love me, you will keep my commandments." It's a lot of commands in the Bible. That God expect for us to keep. And we got to do just that. People cannot live my life of righteousness. I got to live it. I got to. Because God going to hold me accountable. Okay, is there anybody online tonight that would like to say anything concerning this topic? And the topic is um, curveball. <laughs> curveball. Amen. Is there anybody online tonight that like to say anything? Amen. You can speak now. <clears throat> speak now. Amen. Like I said, don't be afraid to say whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to say. Amen. Because I'm telling you, we living in a day and time now where God is using anybody. Anybody that he that, that, that got a heart for him, he's willing to use you. Amen. Don't let nobody tell you God can't use you. God can use anybody. People look down on folk because they ain't got no suit on or they ain't got, you know, or, or they ain't got their hair laid and, and heels on. I mean, come on now. God will use anybody. <laughs> come on. He will use anybody. We can't allow people to paralyze us from encouraging other people because it may be somebody out there that need to hear what you have to say because of the simple fact. You know, they've been studying your life. Or it could be somebody that everybody else couldn't get to. But God saved that person just for you so you can witness to that person. And when we choose to be disobedient and not speak and tell a person what God is leading us to tell them, then we are robbing that person of deliverance. We are robbing that person of life. You know, we are robbing that person. We got we got to be obedient to what the Spirit is leading us to say to people. We cannot be timid. We cannot be scared because God didn't give his people that spirit. Me personally, me personally I'm a very reserved, private person. Hey, me, I'm a very private person. <clears throat> but when the Holy Spirit gets in me and get activated, you would think I'm the loudest person in the room. I'm telling you. But the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you to say what need to be said to that person or to those people. So with that being said, nobody online would like to say anything. <clears throat> Amen. We're going to go ahead and, and, and uh, move, out, move on to uh, our closing prayer on tonight. Because it's going on 1250. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the closing uh, prayer. So if anything, I'm again, again, anybody online would like to say anything concerning anything that they heard tonight or just something that God had put in your spirit to say, go ahead and speak now. Amen. <coughs> Amen. 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 All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to prayer on tonight. Amen. Amen. If you got some anointing oil, get your oil out. Anoint your head. Amen. Anoint your head. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. 
Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to say thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit on tonight. I want to say as your servant, I heard every word that you said. God, it's up to me to be obedient to what I have heard tonight. It's up to your people that are listening to be obedient to what they heard tonight. Father God, I know that you are God that break chains. I know you are God that deliver and still set the captives free. I thank you, Father God, for touching us in a mighty way, God. Thank you, God, for softening the hearts of those that have hard hearts, God. Father God, we know that we don't have the ability to change anything or anybody. But God, we put it in your hands because it's you that bring a change in our lives. It is you that help bring a change in our loved ones, God. God, right now I'm interceding for the ones that are not saved, God. I pray, God, that they will they will come into your presence like never before. God, I pray that they will open up their hearts and let you in, God. God, I pray that you will set free and deliver those that have been oppressed, those that have been uh, um, possessed by the devil, Lord God. I pray for freedom on their behalf, Father God. Father God, I know that you're doing a new thing here on the earth, God. I know, God, that you are mending that, that you are mending hearts, that you are transforming, you are transforming minds. I know, God, that you are renewing the minds of those that are that are think contrary to your word. Those people that are stony hearted, those people that want to have their own way. God, I know that you are dealing with those people, and God is, and God, we know that you're gonna do a good thing in those that 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 you have called for your purpose. And Father God, we say, help us to have more patience. Help us to have patience and be able to uh, uh, have patience, enough patience enough to see what you are doing in the lives of others. And have patience when it comes to our own lives. Because some, some of us have been praying for healing. Some of us have been praying for breakthrough. Some of us have been praying for a lot of things. And it seemed like it's not coming fast enough. But God, allow us to, God, give us the strength to have patience. Because patience is the key to everything when it comes down to dealing with you, Lord. Because you're going to do things your way and in your will, God, according to your will. Father God, some of us are going through situations right now that we have no control over. But God, we ask you right now, God, to give us the strength to be able to to endure, build our character in the midst of us going through, God. Because we don't want to be sad going through this thing. We don't want to be angry and mad going through this thing. We want to go through these things. We want to go through the, this situation with peace. We want to eventually work our way up to having joy about this thing. Because we know, God, that you going to have your way. And, God, your way is best. The way we want to do things, huh, we don't stand a chance. But the way that you move, God, it's best that you handle it. It's best you do things your way. It's best you move on your timing. It is your will, God. Not our will, but your will to be done. Your will to take effect. Your will is what changes everything. It's your will. And it's your will that we come to you for comfort. It's your will that we come to you with every issue, with every problem. And we say, have your way, Lord. God, we pray for the sick people. We pray for the sick people that are going through, those people that have cancer, those people that have any type of autoimmune diseases, those people that have uh, tumors, those people that are suffering from any type of infirmity. Father God, we ask it for deliverance on their behalf. We interceding for the behalf of people that are going through, that has been praying and has been waiting. Oh, Father God, we ask you to move in their lives, God. Oh, Father God, have your way. Oh, God, may COVID-19 disappear off this earth, God. May it be no more, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, teach your people how to do warfare. Oh, God, when your people wake up 12 or 1 o'clock, 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning time, may they pray to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, help your people. Like never before, God. Help your people to see you like never before, God. Move in their lives, God. Do miracles, God. Signs and wonders, God. Because that's what it's going to take for some people to believe you. Huh. Oh, Father God. I thank you for it right now. 
I thank you for what you're going to do right now. I thank you for what you have already done. Because, God, you have done so much. You have done so much, God. Oh, Father, you have done so much, God. What can you not do, God? You have done so much. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. You have done so much already. But God, it's amazing that you got so much more in store. You got so much more to do in the lives of your people. We thank you, God. We thank you so much, oh God. Thank you, God. God, we ask that you, I ask, oh God, that you cover Watch Out Podcast, God. Cover it from every attack of the enemy. Shield and protect every caller that had ever called this line. Shield and protect Sister Lena, Lord God. Oh God, have your way in her life, Lord God. Have your way in Brother Troy's life, Lord God. Oh, Father God, wherever they're going through, Lord God, help them, God, overcome every situation, God. Put a head fence of protection around them right now, by shitty, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody that ever called this line, Lord God, they have went, they are going through warfare. And God, I ask you to touch their life, God. Touch their life in a mighty way, God. Oh, oh God, may your presence soak them right back in. Soak them right back into your presence, God. Oh, God, your anointing, suck them back, oh, God. Get them back in alignment of your will, Lord God. Because it's not your will that any man shall perish. But it's your will that every man have have abundant life through Jesus Christ. And, Father God, we receive everything that you have done so far in our lives. And we repent, oh, we repent, oh, God. We repent for everything that we have ever said and done. And we repent for not treating our brothers fairly and accordingly. And we repent for every negative word we ever spoken over anybody. Oh, Father God, and we forgive others that have done evil towards us, God. We forgive others for slandering our names and, and, and belittling us. We forgive others for trying to get us off the path of righteousness. Oh, Father God, we have... We forgive because we know we don't forgive. You won't forgive us when we sin against you. And those people that have a hard time forgiving God, help them. Because we know it ain't easy to forgive people when they come against us. Help us. Because God, I struggle with it at times. Help me, Lord God. Help me, Lord, in my forgiveness. Because I want to be right in your sight, God. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to sit up here and tell people to do this and do that. And I ain't doing it. Father God, help me in my walk, God. Because you are holding me at a higher standard. Because I say I am a witness. And Father God, I thank you for using me. Using me to be a vessel. Using me to to, 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 to tell the people that are lost about Jesus. Thank you, God, for choosing me. Because I didn't choose this thing myself. You chose me. You chose me before you even formed me out in my mother's womb. You had chose me and you have called me. And I thank you for it right now, God. I thank you for it right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, God. I thank you, Father God, for what you have already done. I thank you for what you're doing right now. And I thank you for what you're going to do. Because eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all the things that you have planned for those that love you and genuinely seeking you. And I say, have your way, God, like never before. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I want to thank each and every caller that had joined me online tonight. And I also want to thank the thank the listeners that may come across this video audio over YouTube. I thank you and God bless you. I don't really have no announcements tonight, but I will say that um let's see what day it is. I'll be back live again on uh let me see one, two, three, four. I'll be back live again. I'm gonna give you the date, y'all. Um uh July the seventh. I'll be back again July the seventh. And um for another move of God. Amen. 
And um, with that being said, I don't have any more announcements um, right now. Um, I, I am going to start back doing some um, some outreach and everything, but in due season, in God's timing. But um, like I said, please, 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 those of you that are not saved, please, please, please accept Jesus in your life wholeheartedly. Please open up to him. Please give him, give him all of you. He don't want some of you. He want every part of you. Please, because you will not regret it. It's so many people that's going to perish and go to hell because they have not opened up their heart to, to Jesus. They have not accepted him. Amen. God can change your life. He could change your life for the better because those of you not that's not really living in Christ, you're not happy anyway. You don't feel fulfilled anyway. Anybody that's not of God, they're going to always have a void. Like they're going to feel like something is missing. I mean, it's it's not going to be, it's nothing going to be able to fulfill that. Money ain't going to fulfill it. Sex ain't going to fulfill it. <laughs> you know, partying and, and drinking ain't going to fulfill it. You're going to always feel a void. Like something is missing. And, and and what's missing is Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus has to be, has to fulfill that void that's in your heart. Because that's the only way you're going to live a life that's worth anything. Is when you accept Jesus. Because then you will begin to have a purpose in life. You begin to be able to operate in the gifts and the calling that he have for you. I mean, it's one, you got to work too hard to work in a gift when you don't have the Holy Spirit. You know, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you overwork yourself. You know, trying to get men to notice you and this and that. But when you got the Holy Spirit, you ain't got to tell nobody nothing. They can just sense. They can feel the Spirit of God bounce off of you. <laughs> You ain't got to tell nobody, I'm this and I'm that. They're going to they're gonna know something different about you. So please, please get yourself right with God. Because the time is, is going to be a time that comes. You might lost your loved one, but you're going to be joining them soon. Every, 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 we're going to all go back to this. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when Jesus, when it's your time to go in front of Jesus... You want to make sure you're in right standing with him. This is why I do this. I do this so people can have the people can know about Jesus. People can have the acknowledgement of Jesus. They'll know who Jesus is so that they can be free. This is this is all this is why I do this. This is my sole purpose is to do this and to also warn those that are in Christ. Warn y'all about what's going on in this dark world. Warn y'all. Because somebody going to have to do it. It's a lot. Of, yeah, it's a lot of podcasts out there. It's a lot of, you know, stuff going on on the internet. But at the end of the day, over here, we operating in, under the spirit of the, uh, of the true and living God. <laughs> I can speak that over here. Hey, Amen. And people that's not of God, God will dismiss them. That's just how it is. <laughs> They're going to dismiss themselves anyway because the spirit, an unclean spirit cannot dwell with a spirit that's of God. And you got to understand this. That's why some people is not staying in your life. That's why some people just disappear right out of your life because they can't stand that spirit and them cannot stand the light that is on your life. The light that shines so bright. You got to get to that point and say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get to that point in your life where you're going to let your light shine in this dark world because your light, people need your light to shine. Because their souls connected to your light and you need to shine on them souls with, with, with what God has given you. Amen. It ain't about no titles. It's about doing what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. And there are some people out there that are saved, but they're not filled with the Spirit. Just because you get saved does not mean you have the Holy Spirit. You got to thirst after righteousness. When you get saved, that's not it. You got to thirst. You got to keep doing things. You got to keep believing in God. You got to keep 
doing what his words say do. And when the time is right, that Jesus will, will, will place the spirit, the Holy Spirit within you. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and, and shut this down for tonight. But I thank each and every listener. And I thank each and every caller that had joined me online tonight. I say God bless you and your family. And may you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week weekend. And like I said, we back here again July the 7th starting at 11.30 p.m. Those of you that have been listening online, please join in. Because it's nothing like being here live and actually being a part of the movement. Because you never know, God may want to use you to put something in the atmosphere. Amen. So with that being said, thank you and God bless you. Good night.